What up, y'all? It's Juan Sir Grove checking in with the American people and our allies. It is midnight. That is, it is today. 30 November, Saturday. 2019, start date. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Thank you, too, by the way, if you're tuning in late night, early morning, depending on your parallax view of the multiverse and your geospatial location relation thereto, thereof, therewith. So how is every one of us? Yes. I am the host of this podcast, C4CW, casting 495 celebrities worldwide. And if you are true fans of this show, then I, we 495, most certainly you already know, appreciate you. Yes. So Turkey Day is behind us moving forward here. Next holiday is Christmas for those of us Judeo-Christians and other folks who are observant and not anti-Christmas. That's right. And for those of you who celebrate Hanukkah, we appreciate you and other faith-based groups who have their own religious beliefs. We do not discriminate. To each his, her own. Happy fucking holidays. So, in that, yes, this is the late show. This is the late show version of C4CW. But again, that's where I am here in the Far East. Early morning makes it kind of not so late. But, huh, kind of makes it morning time. So I guess that's early. Again, depending on your parallax view. So welcome to the early show. (laughs) <laughs> and late show, and late and early, both. So, uh, welcome to the both show. So, yeah, man, just um, chilling, 100% sober. Some people are like, Grove, are you always, like, inebriated when you do the show? And I'm like, no. Most of the time, I'm actually sober. Sometimes I pretend like I'm intoxicated for, you know, stage effect. Sometimes I actually am right now. I am totally fucking wasted. Huh. Yeah, I've had um a few too many. Psych, I haven't had a drop of liquor. No, nope, no liquor in my system. No booze. Just dipping through hyperspace. Flight navigator type stuff. You guys ever see that movie, Flight of the Navigator? From the 1980s? Flight of the Navigator. That's my shit right there. Yeah, Flight of the Navigator was dope. The movie Black Hole, The Black Hole was dope. Uh, The Last Starfighter was dope. Yeah, I know. The kids' movies. I mean, shit, everyone's a kid at heart. I still like those fucking movies, man. Shit, the original Tron. Uh, Let's see, what else? Real Genius. Uh, Real Genius is fucking dope. I want all of y'all, if, you, if you're looking for some good shit to watch, like some retro, like fucking real ultra dope shit, if you want to know, like if you really, if you really want to, like I'm saying if you're fans, if you're not fans, then you won't give a shit, but if you are real true fans, and you're like, bro, sometimes I'll be listening, man, to the show as a fan, yeah, yeah. And I'll be hearing your movie recommendations and critiques and reviews. And this shit's pretty outrageous, to say the least. Ha <laughs> ha, you was funny. Um, some people are like, Grove, you're not even close to funny. But for those of you who enjoy my humor, my brand, my style, my shtick, um, real shit, if you want to go back and watch some like retro, vintage, ultra fucking classics, and if you're like, Grove, I've kind of been looking for some shit to like watch. You know, I am kind of thinking about, like, what is Grove saying a good movie is to go back and see? Yeah, I like Grove's reviews and shit. I'll be checking out some of his reviews. Yo, if you really want to fucking know what is ultra dope and what ultra dope really fucking means, go back and watch the movie Real Genius. Watch the movie Real Genius. And then watch the movie The Manhattan Project. Shit. Real Genius Man is a comedy. Kind of slash. Well, it's a comedy. But there's some serious shit in it, too. 
I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to say anything about it other than Real Genius is in one Sir Groves book, Ultra Fucking Dope. So go back and check out, um, go back and check out Real Genius. And then check out, uh, check out the movie called The Manhattan Project. I'm going to bring it up right here. Give me one moment. I'm going to put this on pause so y'all won't even know that it skipped a beat. I'm going to put it on pause. I'm going to look it up. I got to, I got to get a power, um, power strip going on here. Let me power it up. Hold up. Mad science, science. (laughs) Yes, I am a mad scientist. Um, Mad Science was fresh, man. It was a fresh comedy. That that movie was fun. That was a fun movie. By the way, I thought I was going to be pausing for longer than I did. Uh, I realized that I have more juice than I thought. Um, so, whilst my uh, device uh, powers on... Yeah, uh, Weird Science was cool. Would I put it in the category of ultra dope? No, not really. I mean, Weird Science was fun. It was imaginative. It was um, it was a good fucking ride. Uh, the chick was hot, you know. The dudes were fucking slick in how they did their their um their shit. You know what I mean? Their gameplay, their gambit, because you know they strategize so. And that, yeah, that shit was rad. It was a rad movie, but it wasn't ultra dope, per se. Not in my book. Not in my... Close. Close. One and a half notches under being ultra dope. Well, one notch. One notch. I mean, fuck. Okay, look. Closer to ultra dope. Closer to ultra dope than not ultra dope. Okay? So, pretty fucking close. It is one of those, like, okay, ultra classic, definitely in the category of ultra classic, but, um, not ultra dope category, okay, ultra dope, though they sometimes overlap, distinct, distinction here, different, okay, different category than ultra dope. Ultra classic, yes. Ultra dope, no. Real science, (coughs) ultra classic, just not ultra dope, but close. Um, the Manhattan Project. Come on, motherfucking Goog. Let's see if Goog is gonna, is going to cooperate. Let's see, come on, man, let's go. Come on, Sycamore. See, it knows when I'm... The Manhattan Project movie, 1980s. Mm, so much for a quantum fucking computer. The Manhattan Project is a 1986 movie directed by Marshall Brickman, starring Christopher Collett, John Lithgow, and Cynthia Nixon. Okay. That took a really long time for a quantum fucking computer chip. Kind of kind of feel as though I'm being toyed with a little bit. How? Hold on. Let's go a little step further. What was the movie The Manhattan Project about? The Manhattan Project is a 1986 movie directed by Marshall Brickman, starring Christopher Collett, John Lithgow, and Cynthia Nixon. Okay, you already said that. That's that's not <laughs> it's not what the fuck I asked you. The Manhattan Project synopsis. Here's the synopsis of the Manhattan Project. Ingenious adolescent Paul Stevens, Christopher Collett, learns about the grim prospects of nuclear aftermath when his mom becomes romantically involved with government scientist John Mathewson, John Lithgow, who is currently experimenting with the ingredients for atomic warfare. Shaken by what he sees, Paul decides to nab the destructive materials and make a small-scale display of their horrible powers at the New York Science Fair, but the Secret Service isn't pleased with his actions. 
That movie is ultra fucking dope. Man, I I I don't know if I should have even brought up the synopsis because that's kind of telling you a little too much. If you haven't seen the movie The Manhattan Pro man, that shit should you know what, man? You know what? When I make a billion dollars, I need to remake that movie. I need to secure rights to that movie and remake that shit in the 21st century. That movie is ultra fucking dope. That movie's no joke, man. Seriously. Like, I know you're probably like, come on, Grove. Come on, bro. You going, you going on about the Manhattan Pride? Yeah. Yeah, I am. You know why? Because it's ultra fucking dope. That shit was hardcore, man. I mean, even in the context of today, if someone pulled off some shit like that fucking today, dude, if someone were to do that shit today in the 21st century, that shit would be fucking ill-matic. I look at the dudes or whomever, could be women, I don't know, Oceans, Oceans 2021, 20, <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. Whoever just pulled off that caper in Germany, that billion dollars worth of jewelry, billion dollars worth of jewelry. Sorry, man. I'm so accustomed to rappers using the expression jewels. Um, I meant to say jewelry. Um, the one billion dollars estimated ish in, uh, jewels, man. Look, I don't know how they did it. I mean, I have my suspicions, but, uh, yeah, man, that safety glass and shit. And all those uh, sensors. I mean, with with the uh, with the right countermeasures, the right uh, electronic lock picking tools, and you know, frequency finders, and you know, laser grid deactivators. I mean, just saying, man. Like, I don't want to tell you too much, man, about the Manhattan Project. But knowing what's capable nowadays, and knowing what takes place in the movie The Manhattan Project. I mean, look. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I've read, I believe it's Vanity Fair. Is it, is it, is it Vanity Fair? Are they, is that the magazine that does the different, uh, they have the different um, stories in Vanity Fair? Let me see, hold up. Because I remember back in the 1900s, that would be the 20th century, I used to um, read, is it Vanity Fair? Hold on, let me look it up. Let me see. Let me see if I don't want to give y'all. I don't want to provide inaccurate info. Come on, Sycamore, you've been playing games. Let's go faster. Vanity Fair stories, Los Alamos. Yes, yes, indeed. I believe that is correct. Uh huh. Yep, because it says right here, 2014. Quote: When Rich uh, Lavernier. I don't know if I'm saying the name correctly. And Chris Steele blew the whistle on Washington. I was talking about nuclear insecurity. 19 March 2014, start date. Um, yeah, so Vanity Fair does and has done expose on uh, exposés. <laughs> I don't know the French, but for the plural of an expose. Has done uh, pieces, investigative uh, journalism pieces stories those are on uh los alamos and uh nuclear security and as you heard nuclear insecurity in america and uh just to give you a brief overview summary of what i recall from not just vanity fair but multiple other sources similarly um these black hats they uh well I, i guess i mean technically they'd be white hats because they're good guys pretending to be black hats. So our U.S. government red team, some call them tiger teams or gray hats because they're in between black hats and white hats, but it was definitely our U.S. government. So pretending to be black hats. So so let me just clarify. Um, so these white hats pretending to be black hats, they came to test the security of Los Alamos where if you are unfamiliar, Los Alamos is a uh, facility that houses nuclear um, weapons, strategic, ar- nuclear strategic arsenal of um, 
nuclear um, warheads and other nuclear fissile materials. And so to test the security integrity um, thereof, these uh, agents of our U.S. government at the highest levels of um, security credentials classification, they told the Los Alamos base security folks the day that they were coming to the base. The day. They, they told them. They're like, yeah, we're going to come to the base at this time. Um, well, at, on this date, rather, to um, t- to check the security of, you know, to test the security of the base. Each and every fucking time, if I recall correctly, and I'm pretty sure what I recall is fucking factual. Um, because even before I became a government uh, <clears throat> security professional myself, Intel contractor, I was always fascinated in how to penetrate, that is, infiltrate different types of base facilities. I mean, my friends and I used to do shit like this when we were fucking kids. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. We used to, um, (laughs) I mean, I, I, you know, that's classified. I can't even actually go into details about that. But, um, you know, we played a lot of sports, man. And, uh, my grandfather was a master craftsman and a lot of my friends are, um, very prodigious. So we grew up doing shit and, uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, that's one of the reasons why, uh, when I was a teenager, I said, look, when I'm an adult, when I'm an adult, I'll go to work in government and this shit that we've been doing as kids, man, I'll apply it then. Um, which is what I've done. So I was always intrigued by these types of, um, these types of, uh, case, case files and studies. This dude got a big ass truck with the ladder and shit. It's nighttime, you know? Oh, I see. He sees, um. He sees, uh, <laughs> never mind. Anyway, um, I'm just creeping. That's all I'm saying. So, um, he just sees a bunch of like darks and then like some electronics. And he's probably thinking that I'm like, I don't know, man, probably like surveilling him and shit. I mean, look, buddy, you look a little suspicious. It's goddamn midnight. I'm sure you're going to work somewhere with your ladder in your work truck. I got my fucking eye on you, dude. Yeah, I'm watching you. I'm watching you, motherfucker. So, um, so these white hat, white hats playing black hats, they told Los Alamos the day that they were coming. Every fucking, they, they, and okay, so they come to the base, they surreptitiously break into the base, like straight up break into a nuclear base, a base where nuclear weapons are housed and they get the nuclear weapons. Yeah, the nukes. Now, you may be thinking, come on, Grove, no way. And I'm like, yeah, way. Man, truth is stranger than fucking fiction, man. I knew that shit back or fresh out of high school. Was it in high school or was it fresh out? Um, The reason I do that, man, is to obscure the timeline. Um, You know, man, I mean, I have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man. If you work in counterintelligence, you know what I'm talking about. But the point is, man, some time ago. I, um, I was peeping the article, man, and the intel on that shit, and I was like, yo, that is fucking illy, yo, that is illmatic. So, Los Alamos base security was so fucked at the time that government white hats could come in. I'm talking about highly trained, like, NEST, like, nuclear emergency security team, task force, you know, and other scientists. They could legit break in, break in, as if they were outsiders, They could break into nuclear bases in America and they could walk away with nuclear fucking weapons. I'm talking about nuclear weapons. So the third time they did it, because they came back three times. That's the number after two. And when they came back, when they came back the second time, they were even more aggressive. And then the third time, man, they were like, these niggas is Z. 
out like trout, trout mouths. Yeah, these trout mouths were out, out like trout, zeeing, snoring. What is it, jumping over fucking sheep in their dreams and shit? I don't even know if that idiom is right. You know, the Mandela effect's weird. The fucking, what, the wolf with the, you know, whatever green eyes sleeps with the lamb? The fuck does that mean? So I don't know. When niggas are snoring, when they're sleeping, they used to jump over, I thought, sheep. But maybe they're jumping over, like, wolves or some shit now. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's normal in this universe. I'm not from here. But the point is, man, who fucking knows? Shit changes, man. Timeline shift. So, um, no, I'm not schizophrenic, man. I'm talking about the Mandela effect that half of the global population is aware of. Is half the world population schizophrenic? Some scientist out there is probably like, yes. Um, <laughs> dick. Um, but anyway, the point is, man, the third fucking time these black hats, they're not really black hats, but these black hats, white hats, came to Los Alamos. They fucking bum rushed the fence line. They're just like, you know what, man? Fuck this place. We can take nukes out of here anyway. And we have to show these people how fucking stupid they are. So they, like, drove a truck through the fence line. It's, like, supposed to be electrified, but it, like, wasn't. They just, like, rammed a truck through the fence line. They went onto the base with, like, weapons. And they went below ground subterranean. They they electronically, like, lockpick opened all the, like, you know, frequency counter, right? They, like, tuning fork. They, like, went through all the different levels of the base. Like, they're aliens and shit. Like, they teleported in, grabbed the nukes, and threw that shit in, like, a Kmart, Walmart fucking shopping cart and smashed off and videotaped it. Yeah, they videotaped the shit. They threw nukes in a goddamn supermarket fucking shopping cart. Like, yo, check it out. We got a nuclear bomb in a fucking shopping cart after we just rammed the fence at Los Alamos, these niggas is sleeping, snoring, zeeing, and they rolled off with a nuclear fucking weapon. Multiple of them, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. That shit is fucking ill-matic. Ultra-ill-matic. Man. Yeah. Wow. So, that being said, and that wasn't too long ago, on some timeline, don't take my word for it, man. Cross-reference the information. Look it up. See if what I'm saying is true or untrue. Um, I am one Sir Grove. I do highly recommend checking out the ultra motherfucking dope ass movie called The Manhattan Project.